Let us pray. God, our Father, who by sending into the world the word of truth and the spirit of sanctification made known to the human race your wondrous mystery, grant us, we pray, that in professing the true faith we may acknowledge the trinity of eternal glory and adore your unity, powerful in majesty, through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. Good morning. I thank you all for being here this Trinity Sunday. Before I begin the sermon, I just want a little clarification because Deacon and Chris or I are not priests. We're using what's called reserve sacrament this morning. What that is is the sacrament that was consecrated by Father Tom last week. We put a little bit of away just for moments like this. So in the event he's not here, of course, we use that. And that's, again, why Deacon Chris is here. So today, we celebrate the Holy Trinity, the three natures of one God. This, to me, is impossible to express with words. I concluded in seminary in my systematic theology class where we spend much time discussing and considering the Holy Trinity, or in seminary speak, what we would call the triune God, that my brain and no one else's brain is big enough to fully grasp the concept that one plus one plus one equals one. <laughs> to attempt to use physical examples many of us have heard, such as the Trinity is like clover, three parts and one leaf, where the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit are like an egg, the shell, the yolk, and the white that make the egg. And my all-time favorite, the triune God, is like a cheeseburger, cheese, the burger, and the bun. <laughs> These descriptions may serve a purpose for some to gain some sort of internal peace and perhaps security in duping themselves and others into believing they can understand that which is beyond our understanding. In my opinion, these sort of responses only serve to confuse, sort of like the tooth fairy. There was a time that I did believe in the tooth fairy, and as a child, the tooth fairy was a source of much concern. The thought of some sort of creature sneaking into my bedroom in the middle of the night looking for one of my teeth that I was told to put under my pillow in hopes of getting a dime, which, by the way, was significantly less than my, my friends were getting. <laughs> I questioned myself. What was this fairy going to do with my tooth? Why the exchange of money? What if he came for all of my teeth before they came out? <laughs> in short order, I lost yet another tooth. I brought these concerns to my father and expressed my fears and subsequent reluctance to putting the newly lost tooth under my pillow. His response was this, I will have a talk with this tooth fairy <laughs> and he won't be coming around here anymore. <laughs> that worked for me. In seminary, like my father did with the tooth fairy, they quickly shot down the notion that the triune God was like a cheeseburger or any other earthly description. The Holy Trinity God cannot be learned. Our relationship with God is to be experienced. God created us to be in a relationship with God. Today we heard a creation story. Most of us, I'm sure, have heard it before. But do you ever consider why God created all the seen and unseen? To me, God is love. Before creation, God existed in a state of pure love. As I see it, what good is love unless you have somewhere, something, or someone to share the love with? God knew that and decided to create, as stated in today's reading, everything. Then created us to love, gave us choice, free will to choose if we desire to love God. God loves us in ways that we don't possess the knowledge to understand. I often think God's love for us can be seen and felt in many ways if we look. I have seen places, seen sunrises, gaze speechless upon creation. If I had been asked to describe what I was looking at, 
what I was feeling within, words would have failed. Some sense and express this unspeakable love in any number of endless ways, through art, poetry, dance, music. For me, a very real way I've experienced love without words was the first time my daughter placed my granddaughter in my waiting arms, shortly after her birth. I looked at this most beautiful infant and I almost could feel the love within me radiating to her. And likewise, I could literally feel the love coming from her entering into me, a love without words, a love as real and as solid as this pulpit. Was that a grandfather's transference or counter-transference, a feeling born internally from within my need, my desire, perhaps? But to me, it was and is love in full expression. So it is with God, my father creator, to be held in his arms as I held that infant Elise and to feel God's love. Or to be with Jesus, my redeemer, as he teaches me through the gospel as to how to love others, especially those others that I don't even like. <laughs> as he first had loved me. Or to feel the love of the Holy Spirit within me and as close as it, and as necessary to me to sustain life as the air I breathe, giving me courage and hope to share of God for me as I journey through each day and each moment of each day, the dare is to search for God in every breath, to be thrilled by God's creation, comforted by God's teachings, knowing God, experience the pains of being a flesh, feeling the empowerment, the spirit, to use me, to use us as a conduit to move God's love into this world, knowing that God is with me to the end of the ages. Yes, I do believe in God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, but I also believe and know that God is more than any humble attempt to verbalize an understanding of all that God is. God is here in each of us, in our work, our play, our heartache, our childlike bickering. God is here. God is in relationship with us. At a bereavement group, one of the primary goals is to normalize the emotions of the bereaved. This is accomplished through sharing with each other feelings in a very safe environment. Building relationships and knowing their grief is unique, but similar to others in the group. When working with soldiers, they had an expression. They say, same blood, same mud. They know each other, even though they never met. They have experienced similar losses and similar journeys. It occurred to me, God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, all of us, we know each other. We have shared the same blood, traversed the same mud, sit in our grief group, our book club, our discussion group, Come to fellowship after church. And by the way, everyone is invited to fellowship, and that's one of the best parts of Sunday morning. <laughs> Come to fellowship and meet folk just like you, people who know pain, suffering, success, failures. Get to know each other, and in so doing, get to know God and all of God's expressions. Get to know love. Amen. Let us pray. God in three persons, blessed Trinity, on this special day, we have come before you to offer our praise and adoration. You are God, the creator, giving us richly all things to enjoy. You are Christ, the savior of the world, made flesh to set us free. You are the spirit of truth and love, willing to dwell in us. You are holy and blessed. One God, eternal Trinity, be near to us a people formed in your image and close to the world your love brings to life. In Jesus' most precious name, amen. amen.